In this video, I'd like to discuss the future of campaign communication and the way that campaign messaging and communication may take place in future campaigns. Now, to be very clear and to preface all of this, we don't have a crystal ball. If you'd said 10 years ago in 2010 that Twitter will be a major factor in the 2020 presidential election, we would have first said, now what's Twitter again? Remind me what that is, this new thing. And uh, secondly, we would have said, there's no way that's going to be involved in serious politics. But, but it is, and all these other social media uh, developments over the last 10 years have become major uh, factors in com campaign communication. A lot of focus and a lot of energy and a lot of money put into these things. So uh, we don't have a crystal ball to know what's coming down the pike. Uh, communication uh, mediums are changing and evolving so quickly that it's hard to keep up. But, but we're going to take a little look at what may happen in the near future here, uh, you know, those types of developments notwithstanding. First of all, we need to, to pay attention to and, and, you know, continue to remember the old guard, so to speak, which is television and newspapers and things like that. They're still going to play a factor here. They're still, you know, relied upon in a lot of ways and, and seen in some ways as more trustworthy than social media. But um, but so the old guard, the television and, and newspapers are still going to be around. People still watch TV, whether they watch it on their television set or whether they watch it on their phone or their tablet or whatever, we're still watching TV. So uh, there's still a role for television ads and for television news shows for politicians to, to get their message out and to be heard. So people still watch TV and that's still going to be an important factor. There's still a generational gap in technology as well. And, uh, and it's interesting that it lines up as well with the fact that uh, the older generations, seniors and, and older people tend to vote quite frankly, in higher percentages than younger people. So um, while younger people are enjoying this new tech and we're using social media and all that kind of stuff, older people who tend to vote more and tend to be more active in this, they watch TV and they get their news from television. So there's that generational gap at the moment that still makes television a very important uh, piece of the overall communication puzzle for campaigns. Also, television news is uh, still big business. We have multiple 24-hour uh, TV news outlets, and so they need to fill time and fill content. So they're going to be a part of this. There's also the nightly news and different things. I mean, all kinds of things that track these, these elections and campaigns. So um, you cannot uh, discount the importance of, of television news in your campaign communication. So for all these reasons, really, television is not going anywhere in the, in the immediate future. So so we need to end either our newspapers, you know, despite the, the forms may be changing a little bit, but uh, but still they're going to be an important factor in in how these things uh, play out in campaigns. So so we need to, to to continue to pay attention to television. At the same time, we know that that new media is having a large impact on campaigns. So we need to pay attention to that. And just to review some of this, as we discussed a lot of this in a different video, in a previous video, but. Uh, but just to review some of the, the impact that new media is having and how it may extend into the future. Um, first of all, new media presents a lower cost of advertising. I mean, it's cheaper to, to put together a Facebook video or Twitter video or, or and, and post and things like this and Instagram things than it is to buy. It's cheaper to do that than it is to buy yard signs and do all these you know expensive television advertising and things. So there is a certainly a factor that, that is played out in the lower cost of advertising in these forms. You also have the idea of message customization. Again, we talked about this in a previous video that, that you know, television ads really, at, at best, are statewide uh, functions in terms of customization. You, you can kind of customize to a state, but most of the time these are national ads, so it's, they have to be broad and have broad appeal. But you know, when you're talking about a social media post, I mean, you can appeal, first of all, directly to your base, people that have subscribed to you. You can appeal and send different things to different geographic locations. Right, so you can hit on the, the items that are going to be important to them and at the times that you want them to go there. So there's much more customization of message to that, uh, to that geographic location and to that specific voter base. People that are issues oriented, you know, if you have, if you have a, you're trying to gain the support of people who are pro choice or, or pro life or whatever, you can customize your message, message to that group and send it specifically to them and just all kinds of, th you know, much more specific and targeted communication and messaging that can take place through new media than you can in, for example, television and newspaper ads. You also have, through social media, the ability to have almost a real near real-time assessment of things. You can kind of check the pulse of the nation by what people are talking about on social media, by what people are indicating that they care about and what, how they're messaging you and whatever. You can get that almost near real-time assessment. You don't have to wait to see, well, what are these polls telling us weeks later? What's important to people? What, what should we be messaging on? You can get that through data analytics right now. 
Um, so, and speaking of data analytics, we have to consider the idea of data collection. Data collection. Uh, new media offers the opportunity to collect specific data on you know, who your supporters are, what they care about, where they're from, you know, what they're buying, all kinds of things like that, right? What their their uh, their uh, income bracket is. So you have all kinds of opportunities through data collection in, in new media to gather information about your base and about your supporters, and that can't be overlooked. And finally, there's the cool factor of social media, right? And this is going to play an impact moving forward. I mean, one of the things that Obama was able to capitalize on in 2008 when he first ran was that he was one of the first major candidates to kind of embrace Facebook at that time, which was the social media at the time. And, and it made him seem cool. Like he was, he was with it. He knew what Facebook was. He knew how to use it. And not only for messaging, but for fundraising and all kinds of things. So, um, so there's an element of the cool factor that if you, if you, if you shun social media and different things like that as a candidate, then it makes you seem old and out of touch and uncool, right? But, uh, so having a, a vibrant and effective social media um, perspective and, and, uh, and using that for your messaging and communication in a campaign can give you that sort of cool factor. On the flip side of this, I mean, that was all about how candidates are using uh, social media and new media to impact campaign communication and messaging. But on the flip side of this, we also have to consider now that, that social media provides an opportunity for um, kind of this to be kind of a two-way street. So we don't want to overlook what we, what we kind of call a, the voice of the citizen, right? The idea that people are now expressing their own campaign messaging, right? Voting citizens are expressing and sharing their own campaign communication and messaging, letting us know how they feel about things and and doing so broadly and using it as a way to connect with others and to really uh, to, 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 uh, to establish groups and establish sort of voting blocks in a sense. Um, and so we can't ignore that impact as well. It's no longer just the campaigns themselves that are that are messaging and communicating with the voters, but now voters are communicating with with each other. They're communicating with the candidates. They're communicating with news outlets. And you have you know even from just private citizens expressing a view up to what we would call citizen reporters. So people who are uh, kind of quote unquote reporting on things and acting in that kind of media role, but not affiliated or associated with a, with an actual media outlet, but um, you know, kind of doing so on their own. We cannot not ignore the impact that this has on community, or on campaign communication and messaging. Right. So the voice of the citizen is something that has also evolved along with the development of, of social media as a part of these campaigns. All in all, I mean, the future is broad. And again, nobody has a crystal ball. We have no idea what's going to happen in the next 10 years. Again, we, the, things that happen in, in this campaign cycle are things that we never would have imagined 10 years ago, let alone, you know, 25, 30 years ago. Um, and so it's, we just don't know exactly. But we do know that campaigns are going to continue to evolve. They're going to continue to find ways to make use of whatever media is available to them to extend their message and to uh, and to communicate with the the public and, and try and uh, draw support for that particular candidate so we do need to keep an eye on uh, you know emerging technologies and what candidates are able to harness that power and how they're able to use it uh, to the to their benefit and to great effect so uh, if you have any questions don't hesitate to email me about about the future of campaign communication or anything else related to campaign messaging and communication, I'd be happy to discuss that with you via email. In the meantime, again, keep an eye out for these emerging technologies, but also keep an eye out on how we're using these uh, older technologies as we and, and using them differently as we move into the future, uh, because there's certainly not going to be a shortage of campaign communication and messaging. We know that it's just a matter of you know how we use these different channels to communicate that message.